Welcome, my name is Dean Maserell, the mayor for the city of Leominster, and in conjunction with Leominster Access Television and city departments, we have put together this series called Technology and Local Government. We'll take you department by department and show you how we use technology and uh, decision making every day of the week. I hope this is helpful and informative, and if you have any questions at all, uh, you can email me at dmazzarella at lemonster-ma.gov or you can call us at City Hall at 978-534-7500. I hope it's informative, helpful, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for watching. Hi, I'm Lynn Bouchard, City Clerk for the City of Lemonster. Today we're going to show you through um, our portion of the city's websites so you can see for yourself what you can do online. Through our office. This is the City of Lemonster's website. Uh, it's wwwlemonster magovernor um, If you go out to the home page and you go to government, you will see the city clerk right here. Click on to that department and then you can go to all our different election information. This is the elections and registration. This is uh, election information, which allows you to go directly to the se uh, Secretary of State's uh, website, putting your name and your address, and it will show you where you go vote. Another uh, interesting thing is uh, our connection here under campaign finance reports. This is all candidates that are required to file the campaign finance reports here in Lemonster. Uh, that will that'll give you can update um, every year. Take a look at every year of their reports. You can also go back to election and you can go under the election results. That will show you um, the results of any particular year. I'll show you. Um, Let's say a uh, 2016 state election. Click on it's a PDF, and that'll give you the results of the November 8th uh, state election. Also under election and registration, we now have a um, link where you can register to vote online. This brings you right to the Secretary of State's website. Uh, and you just need to follow the instructions here. If you, um, if this works best if you do have an RMV ID or, a, or a, a license from the registry. Okay, back to city clerk and go to city ordinances. This is dated, updated on a yearly basis. This is all the city's ordinances online. This should bring, bring you out to our code. For example, if you have any uh, questions about um, our city charter, click on here. I think. And this kind of tells you about all the different um, structures of our government. We have questions about um, building department. You're going to go here, and it's going to give you all, all their different ordinances, fees, and permits, electrical. We go to online services. This is where you can go. So you can order birth certificates, marriage certificates, death certificates or your dog licenses online. What you do is you go over here, it says online payments. You click on here, and this is gonna bring you out to um, MCC, which is a company that um, provides uh, billing services for us. So we're gonna go here to city clerk's office, and as you can see, the other there are other departments that you can do this with also. Um, 
you're going to go here and you're going to create an account. I'm not going to create an account here. But you need to create an account and then um, after that you can order your birth certificate, marriage certificate, death certificate, dog license online. The dog licenses were on our second year of uh, doing the dog licenses now. We will um, take we also have the capability now of when you come in to license your dog or if you do it online, give us your email address and now we can send you yearly reminders so you won't come and forget to license your puppies. And um, as far as the births and marriages and death certificates goes, I think we've been doing that about three or four years now that we've had the capability. Uh, when we opened up the capability to order online, we opened up, we also opened up being able to come into the office and and pay through a credit card, debit card. Okay, the city uh, clerk's office is made up of three different departments. Uh, it's the city clerk's, we're also the office for the city council, and we're the office of elections and registration. Uh, the city clerk's portion, we're responsible for uh, licenses, dogs, birth certificates, marriage certificates, death certificates, business certificates, numerous licenses. Um, Elections and registration. We run all the elections within the city, all state, federal, municipal elections. Um, we register voters here. We compile a street listing yearly. We send out the census forms. And then this third portion is the city council. This is where their offices are. This is where their mailboxes are. We do all preparation of uh, agendas for the city council and um, we attend their meetings, take the minutes, and pretty much is yeah, just a facilitator of all their, their work. Hi, I'm Lisa Como. I'm the Administrative Assistant here for the City of Lemonster's Recreation Department. I'm just here to talk to you a little bit about um, registering um, online. We have a new computer system program that allows people to register at home right from the convenience of their house um, instead of having to come all the way down to the office or you can come to the office we always love to see um, you come down and, and visit with us while you're signing up your kids we have a lot of recreation programs going on um, you can go to our city of lemonster's website to, to look at those at any time at www.lemonster-ma.gov Click on recreation. Our full brochure is there. We post it in spring and summer and we post it again in the fall, winter. Um, our registration is there as well. Click on register. It'll bring you to the page where all our registrations are listed. If you have any questions or anything, you can always come call the office at 978-534-7529. Uh, We'd be happy to answer any questions you have about any programs. Um, our, we have our own server here at the office. We are linked with City Hall's server as well. Uh, we get emails here uh, regularly, um, so if you need to get a hold of us that way, you can do that as well. The Rec Department has an email at recdept at lemonster-ma.gov. Um, we, um, we have accounts receivable, accounts payable, that's all done through the computer as well. Um, all our deposits are done through the computer through the new um, MCC program. Um, we just download our information uh, every week and send that on over to City Hall. We started with a new program a few years ago uh, for the online registering um, for the convenience of the person at home who works and can't get to the office. Um, so we're hoping that this helps um, make the registration process a little easier. We also have uh, a Facebook page, and that is updated um, pretty regularly. We send the information over to someone who manages that site for us, and she posts new information um, as well uh, on our Facebook page. So it's Lemonster Recreation, I believe. City of Lemonster Recreation Department is our Facebook page. Um, and like I said, if you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. you can Call us here at the Rec Department or send us an email. Thank you so much. For technology at the Lemonster Recreation Department now, um, we are using cell phones. Um, this is one way that um, if we're out of the office um, or um, 
we lose power, we are able to get all of our emails now um, through our cell phones. Um, also, too, if we need to communicate back and forth to people, um, we now have um, text messaging, so we can text message different people throughout the other departments and other our staff as well. Um, also, too, you know, if if the mayor needs to contact us at any time or we need to contact our staff as well, um, we use cell phones to be able to reach each other. Also through our cell phone, uh, we are able to take pictures. So if we're out at a site and we see something that's unsafe or we need to send something to someone, we are able to take a photograph of something with our cell phone and then we can email that to ourselves or to someone else and be able to forward that and at our program sites as well we have cell phones available so that if we need to contact people off-site um, we are able to do that through cell phone technology. Welcome to the Lemister Public Library. My name is Edward Bergman and I'm the Interim Director of the Library. It's my pleasure to talk with you today about how we use technology to provide services to our community. Uh, when I started my career here at the library almost 40 years ago, uh, we still had rotary telephones and the self-correcting electric typewriter was the most advanced piece of technological equipment we had. Uh, if you, however, if you look today, I'm in one of the library's three data closets. Um, we have, in the library itself, we have about 60 desktop computers. Um, we have four servers. Um, we're networked to about a number of networks uh, to City Hall, to our C.W. Myers Library network, uh, to the internet. We have a wireless network within the library, so we have a fairly complex uh, group of offerings that we have, the uses of technology here in the library. Um, the library's HVAC system, lighting systems, building security system, telephone system, all work with very complex uh, network electronics. The Leminster Library was actually one of the city's early, early adopters of technology. In the early 1980s, the library was one of the founding members of the CW Mars, the Central and Western Massachusetts Automated Resource Sharing Network. The formation of the CW Mars network allowed uh, member libraries to share library software, which helped us do library operations like check-in, check out books, keep track of books that people had checked out. But as well, it allowed us to create a shared catalog of all the library's holdings. So gone could be the old um, wooden card catalog drawers that everybody would come into the library to look through to find books. And we were finally able to offer an online catalog, which really expanded um, our patrons access to this materials outside the library's walls. If you fast forward to today, the CW Myers network numbers 149 member libraries that serve over a million registered borrowers in central and western Massachusetts and they have those borrowers have access to eight and a half million items in our libraries. Um, and if that's not enough items, uh, places to look, we are also connected through something called the Commonwealth Catalog, which is a network of all the library networks across the state, which gives our library patrons access to even more items. And in our society today, we expect access online to 24-7 to the services we like to use, like banking, entertainment, um, shopping, and access to library services is no different. With your library card, you can log in and create an account and with your account you can do things like keep track of the books you have checked out, you can renew your items, you can request items from any of the other libraries in our network or through the Commonwealth Catalog. Those items can be delivered to us through a statewide delivery system and they'll be down at the front desk of the library for you to pick up. It's a very, very popular service and I have to say we average about bringing in about 550 items per week for our patrons from other locations. And your choices for library materials are no longer limited to physical items. With your library card, you can check out and download ebooks, e audio, and e video to use on any device of your choosing just with your library card. Uh, you do need to come into the library one time to get your library card, but after that, you can, you can use all of our e content. We also offer a number of online resources. We have resources for students doing projects, full text of magazine and journal articles. Um, databases with biographical information, science information. We have the local newspapers, uh, back issues of that online. We've got investment information, consumer reports, all available 24-7 online with your library card. 
We actually have Ancestry.com database, which everyone sees advertised on television. We have that available through the library as well. That is one uh, resource that you do have to be actually in the library walls to use. The library also participates in a program called the Digital Commonwealth, which is a uh, statewide program that provides support to libraries, historical societies, and museums to uh, digitize historical images and documents and make them available online for, public, for the public. Uh, we began our participation in the Digital Commonwealth by digitizing the contents of the City Hall's 1915 time capsule. That is now, the contents of that are now digitized. They're available on the library website. All of those online resources that I've talked about, be they download, downloadable books, uh, online resources, the Digital Commonwealth, can all be accessed through the library's website at lemonsterlibrary.com. Within the library, uh, we have a number of computers for public use uh, in all the uh, service areas, in the adult area, the teen area, and the children's area. The, the computers have access to the internet. They have Microsoft Office software. Um, we also offer black and white or color printing along with them. And also in the children's room, we have a number of computers for the very young children that are loaded with just educational software games. We also have in the library, our, our library is, um, offers complete Wi-Fi throughout the building and we have a self-service fax machine. So I hope this gives you a little bit of a, a glimpse into how the Lemonster Public Library uses technology to serve the residents of Lemonster. And um, if you're one of those people who uh, hasn't been in the library since we had those little card catalog drawers, I do invite you to uh, either come down we're located at 30 West Street, or visit our website at lemonsterlibrary.org to see what we have to offer you. Here at the Lemonster Senior Center, we have a database that's called My Senior Center. And it has all the data that we use for the Senior Center each day. We can type up reports. Um, to see how many people have come to the center and it's by members only and they swipe the card to go to different activities or programs. Okay and this gives us a count of all the seniors um, year to year, how many people come to the center. It tracks and it's good for the um, funding that we get from the city and the state. When members come in to the senior center they have a key card. Everyone has a key card. They will swipe it it'll scan, their name will come up, and they'll have to push what activity they are going to for the day. Um, if you're a guest, they have a spot for a guest. If you forget your card, which happens a lot, they have a space to just push, and they will sign in with their name, and then they'll come up. This database is sponsored by a lot of um, agencies within the area. Um, they sponsor for it running and advertise as well. Okay, Same so here it is. Your name will come up. It also keeps um, volunteer volunteer hours it'll do. Um, you just push what activity you're going to and then you hit finish and then I'll say thank you for the day. Also, in the background, um, in the computers we have a list of all the activities and this will give us the data each day who checked in who, and who didn't check in and it also helps us with our state grant and the funding from the state and it does reports at the end of the year at the end of the month at the end of the week okay also we have software through the mark company it's called Q rides we schedule rides here at the senior center each day for the seniors of Lemonster our van schedule runs Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. You have to call the day before, before 1.30, to schedule a ride the day before. Now all the data that we enter into a software system through the Mark company. And that is processed over here and it's called Q-Rides. Okay, so what we do is we enter the member's name, the rider, and then we enter where they're being picked up from and their destination of where they're going. The time of the pickup, 
in the purpose of their traveling, be medical, social, shopping, anything like that. And then we do the return ride as well. This will go straight to Mark Company and they come up with their own schedule for their drivers for the next day. So once Mark gets this, they come up with a schedule for their drivers. And, and at the end of the day, once Mart has the schedule, they download it and we receive this fax and this is the schedule for the next day. All the rides. It's for all the seniors in Lemonster. You have to be a Lemonster resident in order to call here to schedule a ride. It's for Lemonster residents, seniors. Um, the van will go to Fitchburg. It's 75 cents each way to Fitchburg and back. 50 cents each way to Lemonster and they go to Lunenburg as well. 75 cents each way. And right over the line, Lancaster to D'Ambrosius. And it runs Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Our newsletter can be found on the Lemonster webpage as well on Facebook. And the newsletter itself can be found on www.OurSeniorCenter.com slash find slash senior Lemonster dash council on aging and that when you go to that you have to download the latest newsletter and just download it and our newsletter will come up for the month and this is probably the most accurate way to find our newsletter and we also have our newsletter distributed throughout the city as well Hi, I'm Mark Primarini, the Assistant Director of Public Works at the DPW. Um, I, Hi. I know. Hi. This is Rich Hume, our dispatcher. Hi there. Uh, all calls come into the dispatch. Um, I call this a center. Yeah, <laughs> dispatch center. And then Rich can then call the department foreman to uh, handle any calls that come in. Uh, so this is, uh, this is where all the magic happens. Um, so complaints come in from the telephone here. Um, whether it be a resident, another city department, uh, fire, police, any of those, um, anything from a, a tree down or somebody, you know, wondering if a, if a tree is, uh, is owned by the city or, you know, something needs to be trimmed, um, things to that nature. The, uh, the other thing that we do in here is the, uh, fuel for all the city departments. We just spent a lot of money upgrading mm, fuel the system. fuel system. Um, so all the fuel, that. All the fuel for all the departments is tracked here. Um, this will go. This will tell you exactly who's using what, how many gallons, um, and it also, I think that, in terms of efficiency, you know, it'll show each department what they're using um, for fuel to do certain projects and that kind of thing. Um, you know, we can get some pretty detailed reports out of who's using what. This is AutoCAD I have open that we use to design drainage systems and sanitary sewer systems. As you can see, the plans are up on the screen. Um, we use that for smaller projects. Large projects in the city, we usually sub out to engineering firms that have mechanical and electrical engineers on them as well. Also on the city website, just so you know, the drainage and sewer plans were scanned in, I think, around 2000, and they've been on the website since then. So these are all the older plans that we have on, the, and they're all scanned on the website under the public works engineering and then sewer and you know I, mean, I don't know if you can see any paper that's all the older plans are in the flat files out back but those are all the ones in those drawers were scanned so we also use the city GIS system which when you go to the planning department they'll, they will explain that more in detail they, they, they have the you know the main they change it the most so so first thing I'm doing is I'm locating this sewer manhole, which uh, we've, we've already got located as part of our, our GIS, our uh, geographic information system. Whenever I come out to do a fresh survey, I like to locate something that's already in the system so I at least have a check as to the accuracy that, I've, uh, that I'm locating stuff to. So what I've got here is uh, this piece is called the it's a, a data collector with an embedded GPS unit uh, it's picking up right here are telling me I've got 19 
different satellites or GPS signals that are coming into the antenna that's attached here. And I can pick up different attributes of the, uh, of the sewer manhole. That's the street and stuff like that. I, I've already got this one in the system, so I already know that what it's about. And I need to, I need to sit on the, at this one point for two minutes to get decimeter accuracy that this uh, unit is capable of. GIS is accurate to two feet. So, and that's towards uh, latitude and longitude. So, so anyone in the world will be able to know where this manhole is. Hi, I'm Kristen Kelly. I'm the planning director for the city of Lemonster, and I'd like to show you the city's um, GIS interactive webpage. You can access it from the City of Lemonster's main website. Here it is here. And you can find it if you go, let's see, government, excuse me, departments, assessor's office, and right here under GIS database. This brings you to a hosted GIS website. And the, the City of Lemonster has a large database of of GIS information for mapping purposes that they've collected and this is an easy way for people to interact with the data. You can turn layers on and off, you can search for parcels, you can create maps. So I'll run through some of the features. So first off is a search function. You can go up here, you can actually search by address, you can search by parcel number or owner name. Here's a picture, here's some information about City Hall, including the parcel number, the size of the lot, the value of the property and the, and the building. And you can also click on a property card. And this comes from the assessor's office and their vision website. So this looks, this is uh, exactly what you can get out of their vision um, website. So this contains more information from the assessor's database, including the, the year it was built, the sale history, the inspection history, it's important to note this is all for planning purposes only. This is not exact and you really need to, um, if you're trying to make decisions based on this information, it's always good to check with me or other, other people in City Hall, the building inspector and that sort of thing to make sure that what, what you would like to do is a fit for that particular zone and you know it's, there's, it's no guarantee that those lines are exactly in the right place so we would always need to check that but it's certainly helpful for planning purposes. You might want to see rivers and streams, lakes and ponds. There's um, some conservation data in here, such as vernal pools and uh, priority habitat. We're not going to see those in the downtown area, but we can zoom out um, in a minute. So these are all layers you could turn on and off just by clicking on them. I can see lot dimensions, and we have most of the lot dimensions for um, the city. This is all the same data that's displayed on the assessor's tax maps, and we do create the assessor's tax maps from this GIS data. Looking at a private home, it has the owner information, but it's only as um, recent as the last extract, so you would need to check that information uh, with the assessor's office to make sure you have the most current information as far as ownership. Often, um, for the planning office and other offices, you may need an abutters list for a special permit or something of that nature. Um, this can help you generate one. You do need to have it verified through the assessor's office. Here's the tab to go to the abutters information. Here you can pick a distance. You may want um, parcels that are adjacent. You may need parcels that are within a certain distance, such as 300 feet. You can pick a distance here, so 300 feet, and if you hit find, it's going to, what it does is it creates a 300 foot buffer around this selected parcel, and then it grabs all the parcels that touch that buffer. You can do this yourself and you can bring it to the assessor's office, or you can go to the assessor's office and they will do this and verify it for you. This is a planning tool and it usually can give you enough information so that you if you know how to move forward with your project and then we can use this as a as a resource